Welcome to Life Coach 180 with yours truly, Ben Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Lopez. And I'm so excited you you joined me today. And today we're talking about change your tomorrow. And why is changing your tomorrow so significant? Change starts with imagination. Everything that exists was once an idea in someone's imagination before becoming a physical reality. Basically, it was these electrons that were triggered or fired up across billions of synapses within the cerebral cortex. I pulled this information from Mark Batterson, and this is a book that I was breaking down called Win the Day. Stop imagining, and you're going to stay stuck in your own today. When you stop dreaming, you stop believing, you kill hope. So a couple questions I want to ask you. What are you dreaming about? Honestly, are you still dreaming? Are you still hoping for your tomorrow? Or do you believe that your day is done? What can you envision about your life that's going to make it better? Have you really stopped to really process what's going to allow my life to, to move to the next level that I want? Or are you allowing the factors and the distractors to hold you back? Your subconscious doesn't recognize the past present or future it only knows the now and so whatever you continue to meditate on will become your reality today so now I want you to really marinate on that what are you thinking about constantly what are you focusing on constantly is it something that's going to propel you and move you forward or is it going to be something that's keeping you stuck what do you think about when I say dreams come true Walt Disney created a theme park for his family and for families around the world. Against all odds and all doubters, he believed and dreamed of a magical place where you would never have to grow up, and dreaming big would be the essence to find joy and happiness. Walt's dreams became for millions their reality, including mine. Instead of it's a small world, the mighty creator spoke of a big world, into existence. Everything that exists originated in the omniscient imagination of the Almighty. It was a thought before it became a thing, and that includes you. You were once an idea in the imagination of God. Hold the thought for a minute, shares Batterson. Imagine that in that moment, you were a thought. You're not here by accident, but God dreamt of you And there's something special in you that he wants to unlock. Take captive your thoughts. And many times when we think of this, we think of it in a negative aspect. But let's look at it this way. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. So what are the thoughts that are marinating that you need to take captive? Think about it. What are the thoughts that are pushing you away from God and the purpose that he's created in you? Choose a God idea over a thousand good ideas. God ideas, according to Batterson's, change the course of history. When you find a God idea, you must nurture it and take it captive. I want you to think about that. How do you get a God idea? Well, the first thing we have to do is you got to pray. There has to be an intimacy between you and the Lord. Align your thoughts to God's thoughts. Joseph in the Old Testament was a dreamer. Even though there were so many setbacks, notice his story started with a dream. And then through all those setbacks, from being accused to being raped, being locked up, being forgotten by his friends, guess what? He was able to unlock those hopes and those dreams for his family. He never forgot about that, and he knew that everything worked in his favor. And there's things that are happening in your life that are going to work in your favor. Maybe they don't look at it right now, but there's a bigger picture that I want you to look at. Pierre Charles Lafonte created the blueprint for what would pave the way for what Washington, D.C. looks like today. David Blaine created some of the greatest illusions. Twyla Tharp is known as one of the greatest choreographers, dancers that ever lived. This one you know, Martin Luther King, his dreams paved the way for racial equality. 
You always hear it in a speech. I had a dream. You have a dream in you. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What are your dreams? Work hard. Dream big. It's in you. God works backwards. A lot of times we live our lives trying to align ourselves to say, you know what, God, what do you have for me? Let me kind of second guess what I have to figure out that you're going to do for me. And God is already saying, hey, I'm on the finish line. We live our lives forward, but God is working in our lives backwards. We're God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance, Ephesians 2.10. He's already prepared the way for us. All we have to do is to seek Him and understand that He has a plan for us. Translation, God's setting you up. When God gives a vision, He makes a provision. He's not going to leave you hanging. No dream catchers are needed. Many times we think we can catch these dreams, but there's a purpose behind it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Jeremiah 29, 11, 12. Let's unpack that. For I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for you. But you have to believe that. Those are plans that He doesn't want to hinder you. He doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to prosper you. He has plans to give you hope in the future. But the question is, do you believe that for yourself? What's the action steps? What's the process we have to use here? Call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. How committed are you to go before God and say, you know what, Lord, we need to have a one-on-one. God is the catcher of dreams. God spoke into existence during the sixth day of the creation. God made certain provisions for Israel out of the wilderness and commanded the Red Sea to split apart. God made the sun and the moon to stand still for Joshua in order to find victory. God sent the ravens to feed Elijah in his greatest need. God commanded the fish to spit out Jonah in order to complete his mission, something that he denied, but there was a bigger picture involved. God protected Hananiah, Michael, and Azariah from burning in the furnace. God kept the mouth of the lion shut in order not to harm Daniel. These individuals were on their last leg, but they kept dreaming. And one thing that I love about them is that many of them had the the perhaps God mentality, perhaps God. But the God that we serve has a plan for all of us. And perhaps he has a big purpose for you that he's just waiting for you to trust him. Dream today because God awaits you on the other side. So here's a newsflash. God does not exist within space and time dimensions he created. So while we think forward, God is working backwards. God always begins with the end in mind. That's the key when it comes to imagining your unborn tomorrows. Radisson shares. Today, make it into a reality. It's one thing to have an idea, and it's another thing to turn it into a reality. Are you putting the work in? Don't give up on your dreams. Get organized. Have those that are willing to run the race with you. It's going to take work. It's going to take blood. It's going to take tears. Things that are worth achieving, guess what? They're going to come hard. Anything easy in life fades away. The good news. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. Notice. Notice how we have it in green. God is able to do immeasurably more So that means that whatever you can fathom, whatever you can think, he can go beyond that. He's working in us. So here's my question. How big is your dream? Is this something that you're willing to carry? Or is this something that you're willing for God to carry? Show me the size of your dream and I'll show you the size of your God.
Dream big.